I'm Maggie. Welcome to Experiments in Crafting. Uh, tonight I've got a handful of things that I'm going to show you, and then, as always, if you have questions or anything, uh, please put those in the chat, and uh, I can get to any of those questions I uh, throughout the uh, live stream. So I've got a few things that I'm going to go over. I'm just going to kind of point them out, and then I'm going to clear the table. Um, I've got a scarf to show you made out of yarn B, uh, must be merino. I've got a blanket that I'm working on out of bloom. I have a bead spinner that I'm going to be showing off and then we'll kind of chat and talk about upcoming projects and upcoming videos and any of your questions. Um, so first of all, welcome to all of you joining me. Um, I don't seem to have the chat unless it's just not nothing generated. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. Um, all right. So I'm going to clear everything off to get just some of the clutter out of the way, and then we can start talking. Um, <laughs> um, I should note here real quick, uh, I've been sick. Hopefully most of you saw that we didn't live stream last week. Uh, because I was sick last week, and so I haven't, one, been shopping much, um, so there's not, not much new to unbox, um, and then two, I may cough or have to blow my nose or something, because I'm still getting over that, so you can probably hear in my voice that I'm a little bit froggy. Um, we are also using a new, uh, audio setup, so if there's a problem with the audio, please let us know in the chat so that we can fix it as fast as possible. Um, but, all right, so without any more, uh, chatting here, I'm going to get into my Bloom project. So while I was sick, I just wanted something simple to work on. And so you'll remember, hopefully, that I bought Premier Bloom a few weeks ago, and this is a yarn brand new from Premier. Um, I'll just go over its stats real quick, uh, before I get into this project, um, Bloom is sold in 200 gram balls. It's 656 yards um, or 600 meters. It is a number three lightweight or DK weight yarn. They recommend a 4.25 millimeter or G crochet hook. Um, they're recommending 3.75 millimeter knitting needles if you knit, um, which is a US 5. Um, it's 100% acrylic, but the interesting thing about Bloom, you'll see it's mostly pink here, but then there's these sections where it's white and magenta and green. Um, so you can see these sections here throughout, but primarily it's a solid color. Um, so I've got it in Peony, uh, which is this pink color, and then I also have it in gray. I don't remember its name, um, and I don't have the ball with me, but... Anyway, I've got, I started working up the gray squares and I really wanted to pick uh, the perfect square for the pattern. And so I wasn't sure how I was going to figure out what looked best. And then I decided to do something completely different, which is I decided to start working up squares and just, I decided I, I was going to make eight inch squares and then work them in a variety of different stitches so that you can see what each stitch looks like. And what I'm gonna do is just seam them all together into one baby blanket with a bunch of different textures. And I think it'll be really interesting once they're all uh, seamed together in sort of a random order. Um, so I'm gonna point out what I've got going on here and then hopefully uh, get you guys to give me some feedback on what additional stitches you'd like to see. So, um, very basic. I've got single crochet worked up here. Uh, one of the things I should point out is that I did not make any attempt to get the pattern to work out in any particular way. And by that, I mean, I just started where the yarn was at. So what I had here was the corner to corner that I worked up. Um, so I worked it up with this gray section and I worked gray and then I hit a patterned section and I just kept working and then I got to just the very beginning of the pattern and you can see this yarn is only pink and white to start with and then it goes to pink and green and white and then just to green and white. Um, 
so I started off with just this little section, uh, or I ended with this little section here, and I just let it be. Um, I didn't try, I didn't pull this back out and try and get this to complete with gray or anything. Um, so I just am letting these squares do what they want. So this was my corner to corner, but when I started off the single crochet section, I started immediately on, um, this square was worked, here's the bottom up to the top. Um, I started off immediately with a patterned section. So I went into patterned and then a big chunk of gray. And one of the things that hopefully you can see on stream here is that it's much lighter along the edges. So it's not a solid gray. It's, it's sort of a, sort of a gradient type of thing. So it sort of gets light as it gets close to the pattern sections. So light, darker, 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 lighter, pattern section, and then light again. Um, so it's kind of mirroring on the edges of the, of the section, of the gr solid color section. Um, one of the things that I've noticed while working this up, and you can see like right here, is there's just randomly like some spots of really dark. And I don't love that. It's, it's really intermittent, and it looks more like a mistake than it does like uh, an intentional speckling. There was this question when uh, Lion Brand Mandala came out. L Mandala Baby? No, I think it was original Mandala, where people were saying, oh, it's speckled, oh, it's a problem, oh, it's speckled. Like, nobody could really decide. And then Mandala Baby came out, and it was clearly speckled. Uh, this yarn is maybe speckled, maybe it's a problem, not super clear. Um, but yeah, it, it looks just like a stain a little bit. And that's what my husband uh, is saying in the chat there. So this is solid single crochet works up. Um, but you can see the intent here is that the pattern section. And if I flip this over, the pattern section is supposed to look like flowers and that's where the name bloom comes from. So you've got these little sort of pixelated flowery bits. The single crochet wants to curl up on me. Um, but you've got these little, uh, flowery bits, you've got some leafy parts and then like a white background. And that's the intent behind this yarn. So there's solid single crochet. The next. Yeah. So the next one here is solid half double crochet. Um, and so you can see half double crochet here. Uh, I, this was the first one that I worked. I had a really big chunk of uh, gray to work through. Again, you can see there's these dark speckly spots just intermittently through this pattern, and I don't love them. But dark gray here, then the pattern section as intended, um, just worked up in a nice straight row here. You can see the pink, pink and white only section right here, um, the pink and green and white section here, and then green and white only down towards uh, this end, I guess, would be where it's at. Um, I sort of wish that it was pink and white and green all the way through because you end up with these chunks that don't really work quite perfectly. Um, but it it is what it is. Uh, so this is, this is how the flowers look on half double crochet. And again... Uh, solid single crochet was right here. So you can see there's a little bit of a difference um, in how they work up depending on what type of stitch you work up. Uh, I'm going to pause for a second and just look through the comments real quick. Um, handful of people just saying hello and admiring the blanket, which is great. So welcome to everybody who's chatting. Um, thank you all for uh, chatting in there. It really helps the stream move along if you guys keep talking, um, even if you're just talking to each other. Um, and then people like the sing, somebody said they like the single crochet. Um, yeah. And then just chatting about the audio, which is good. Cause we've got a new audio set up tonight. So, um, Zana said, yeah. So 
I have that exact same complaint. So Zana said that if you make this in a really wide blanket, you're going to have a very thin strip of not really any pattern at all. So uh, you can see that happening. Uh, I'll go to this one here. So this one, this is done in moss stitch. So moss stitch is single crochet, chain one, single crochet. And then on the next row, you work chains over top the single crochets and you work single crochets everywhere there was a chain in the last row. Uh, which makes for a fabric that doesn't really stretch at all this way, but stretches like infinitely this direction. Um, and that's why I've got all these wrinkly bits and this is going to have to be blocked into an eight inch square. But what you can see, I, I got to, well, what happened here was that I was aiming to make an eight inch square. I kept overshooting, 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 and then I undershot and I had already worked up like most of the square. And so what I decided to do was finish the square out and then add a border so that it came up to eight inches. But what you can see here is that I just have a, a single thin row of the pattern, but it doesn't really look like flowers or anything, especially in the section where it's just pink and white and just green and white. Um, they're just speckled or it looks like you changed yarn every other stitch. Down in the section where you have pink and green and white, um, it looks not like flowers at all, but but you sort of get the general idea. But what uh, Zana was mentioning is that if you worked a really wide blanket, so this is only an eight inch square and I get like, I don't know, a two or three row chunk here. But if you worked a really wide blanket, you wouldn't build those rows up. They would just be a really, really fine row. And that's not going to give you a bloom pattern at all. So I don't really, I don't really get this yarn. Is, is it a uniform spacing between the sections where you could like figure out how far it is and then try to line your blanket up? Um, so my husband's asking if it's a uniform spacing between the sections. I believe so. So this section, like this length of yarn, is pretty equivalent every time. Like you've got this section, this section. These are probably the same weight of yarn, so they're probably the same length. Um, so you could try and figure out your sections, but that doesn't fix the problem. I think the only way to fix this problem is to work multiple balls at the same time. So if you look on their website, there's knitting patterns that are shown. One of the things that knitters do that crocheters don't really do is you'll, you'll see people tell you to work balls alternately if you have a hand dyed yarn. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, so if you have a hand dyed yarn, you, you start with one ball and then you, there's a way that you can change really easily in knitting so that when you work one row, that you work the next, and I don't knit, so I'm, I'm doing a poor job of explaining this, but there, there's a really easy way to flip-flop back and forth between two balls. And in crochet, that's not really true. Um, you, can, you can switch off, but it doesn't work exactly the same way as, uh, as knitting works. And so I think what you could do if you knit this up would be to start with a bunch of balls that all were in the same spot. So if you started gray here, like this light gray, you, you unwound the ball until you got to the light gray section on three balls. And then you worked ball A all the way, or you worked, you know, row one with ball A, row two with ball B, row three with ball C. Then you'd have a speckled section that was three times as long and you'd get to it all at the same time. So you, you'd you end up tripling your thickness. And so I'm thinking that's what they were intending because they show all these beautiful blankets with thick sections, but they're clearly worked up in a wide blanket. And I'm not really sure how else they would have gotten to that unless you tripled your section by working multiple balls all at the same time. And I haven't seen anywhere that says to do that, but that's my best guess at this point. 
Um, alternately, you can work small squares and join them together, which is what I did. So you've seen single crochet, half double crochet, and moss stitch now. Um, so that's these three here. I'm going to slide those off screen. Now I got into some textured stitches just for something interesting. Um, this is called the undulating stitch um, in the book that I pulled it from. So what it is here is little football shapes made by single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, triple crochet, and then uh, reversing that, double, half, double, single. And then on the next row, you work triples into singles, doubles into half doubles, half doubles into doubles, and singles into triples. Um, so tall stitches into short stitches, short stitches into tall stitches, uh, which gives you a sort of, it's hard to see in solid colors, but you get this sort of ripple effect, and then the next row fills in the ripples. Um, and it really made for a nice patterned section, though because I didn't attempt to uh, line any stitches up, I just worked the yarn as it was, um, what I ended up with here is a section that's like, it's three rows thick here, two rows thick here, and only one row thick here. Um, which isn't great, um, but so you end up with the, the pink and white section here and the green and white section down here and the, the all three colors over here. So I think it turned out kind of cool. I think this looks the most like flowers. So you've got like stems growing down here and then flowery bits down here. This side's still kind of chaotic. Um, but if you look at this half, then it... I, I feel like it looks more like flowers. I really liked how this stitch turned out. Um, this is one that I'd really like to add to my uh, list of videos and, and do a tutorial on this one. Uh, just going to glance through the comments here real quick. Um... Yeah, so uh, I guess my husband went to Premiere's website, and you can very clearly see that the... He's going to pull a picture into the stream. Um, but you can very clearly see that it's it's wide, wide blankets. Um, he's going to... Yeah. So there's no way to get a blanket worked full width and then still have speckled bloom sections... Um, and that, those colors don't actually really show the bloom part very well, but, um, you don't get those speckled bloom sections unless you work them three balls or four balls at a time. So maybe the knitting pattern actually specifies that you need to change colors. Um, I think the other thing that that would do is if you work that many balls at a time, these irregular spots will start to pool up a little bit. And you can see in the blue sections on that blanket that there's intentional speckles through there, but they look more regular when there's a lot more, um, in my case, gray, but in their case, blue section. Okay. So this is their crochet. So this is their crochet example. And it almost certainly has to be worked exactly the same way where, because that's a corner to corner stitch. Um, though not the, not traditional corner to corner, that blanket was worked on an angle. Um, but it's not traditional corner to corner, but there's no way to get that without doing multiple balls at the same time. So, um, I'd be interested to see if they publish a pattern on this, if it says to work ball A, then ball B, then ball C, and then keep doing that every row at a time. Um, but anyway, eight inch squares make for a really easy, uh, project. And so what I've, I've got the six different squares. So I'm going to show you the last two here real quick. Um, so again, single, uh, single half double. Oh, I'm off screen. Sorry. Uh, single half double moss stitch and then undulating stitch. Um, and you can see it's hard to get them all on the close up. Um, but there's sort of the, the layout of how each one looks just a little bit different, um, but also how each speckly section works up on those stitches. So moving on from them, 
Um, I showed this real quick, but this is the corner to corner stitch. Um, so just simple corner to corner worked up here um, into an eight inch square. Again, it's got that same problem where, uh, and this one actually is even worse than the undulating stitch, but all of my pink and white pooled over here. My green and pink and white section was spread out along this row. And then the green and white section is really over here. And so you don't really get the flower effect at all, but it's still interesting to look at and it gives a really cool texture. Um, I think it'll be really interesting in the blanket um, when I stitch them all together. Uh, last stitch, and I showed this one real quick uh, before, but this is the... Um, this is the shell stitch. It's a balanced shell stitch, um, which means that it's a shell and then a single crochet, shell, single crochet. And then in the next row, you work a double crochet um, into the single crochets, and then you chain two and work a single crochet into the middle of the shell. And so you get this kind of open, you can see there's holes in the pattern. Um, this is not the interlocking shell stitch that I've shown a bunch of times with the baby blanket that I made out of Premier DK. This is a different shell stitch. And so this one I also like to do a tutorial on. So on the channel right now, we have a tutorial for uh, corner to corner. It's a pretty popular video. So that one should be pretty easy to find. Um, there's also intro videos that I made up um, with single crochet um, and half double crochet. So those are already available on the channel. You can see really clearly when I hold it up, um, all those like weird little black or dark spots that show up in this yarn. Um, especially on half double crochet for some reason, that one really is standing out when I hold it up, but half double crochet, those are all available on the channel. Um, and then I've got moss stitch, the undulating stitch, and the balanced shells that I'm going to get videos together on. And um, from there, once I have the stitch tutorial, you can just make an eight inch square. And that's pretty easy to do. Um, one of the things that I will note, this is the first time that I've made squares to sew into a blanket. And I found it to be a real challenge to hit eight inches because what you would do, or what I kept doing is I would chain and then start working stitches and I would check my chain at the beginning. But when you start working into chains, they sort of expand. And so my eight inch chain or my eight inch, um, a lot of times what I do is uh, foundation single crochet, which is where you work your chains and your, your first row of single crochets at the same time. Um, my, my foundation single crochets would be eight inches and I'd measure it and I'd work the first two or three rows and it would expand and it would be nine and a half or 10 inches. And so then I'd have to rip it all out and try and guess how many stitches to remove um, and then work it again. But what seems to happen is when you start working the yarn, it sort of like sort of self blocks and expands a little bit. And so that was a bit of a challenge for me because I've never, I've never really tried to make repeatable, like same size anything. Um, when I make shawls, it's just whatever t size they turn out is fine. Um, and hats, you, you don't really have to size a hat until you, if you work it top down, you make like a circle and then you decide at, at some point to start, uh, working the same round all the way down. And so you don't, you don't have to make it a particular size. Same with blankets. It does, it never really mattered to me. If my blanket, if I was aiming for 36 inches and it ended up being 35 and a half or 37 or 40, like it really didn't make any difference to me. So um, working with something where I'm trying to meet a gauge has been an interesting challenge. So just sort of learnings from that. So there's my first six squares. Um, what I would like from you guys is if there are stitches that you have been dying to see, or if you have some sort of suggestion for, uh, the other six squares, I'd love to hear those in the, in the comment section or in the chat. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, my intent here is, so I intend to make a double crochet square that, that tutorial is already available on the channel. I'll make a double 
double crochet square, and then the other five squares right now are up in the air. Um, I could work a granny square, but that is really sort of the wrong shape for this, uh, this pattern, unless I could get a section of the bloom all in the center. Because if I, unless it's in the center, um, then it's going to have the same problem as the corner to corner blanket where it's going to spread out. Um, instead of being in a line, it'll be worked all the way around the edge of a granny square. But if it was the center, that might be kind of cool. Um, so those are, those are some thoughts, but if you guys have other thoughts, I would love to hear what stitches you guys would like to see. Um, I've got book upon book of stitches. So it's like, I, I can just go through and start choosing stitches, but, um, if you guys have things that you'd like to see, that's... That's uh, much more helpful for me. Uh, so somebody's suggesting the bean stitch. I'll have to look that up. I think I remember what that is, but I think it's uh, sort of a small puff, if I remember correctly. Um, but I can look into that. That would be a good one. And then another suggestion was a square with mini cabling. That could be interesting. Um, and then... Um... Oh, waffle stitch. Sorry, I'm, I I read right past the comment. Uh, Stephanie suggested the waffle stitch. That that would be really interesting. I thought about even doing like basket weave, um, but I have no idea how that would turn out. So, um, and then the next one, um, somebody was saying they saw on someone's channel where they took a couple of extra squares and made a small purse. That's interesting. Um, yeah, that could be, that could be pretty interesting how, how that works up. Um, Neptune's arrow stitch uses two different shades of yarn. Um, look at how crazy the stitch is though. I'm gonna, I don't have it up here. Uh, hold on one second. He's adding the Neptune's arrow just so we can see it real quick. It's, uh, pretty crazy looking. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, so the undulating stitch that I showed earlier was supposed to be worked in two colors, alternating rows, um, so that, that, that looked interesting. And so this sort of lends itself to being, um, worked in this pattern because it does change on its own. Um, but I don't know. Oh, there's the Neptune's arrow showing up there over the chat. Um, and now over me. Um, it kind of looks like Christmas trees sideways. I think it's like 3D though. But it, it could work up really interesting, but it might just get lost in the bloom. Like it might be too much going on, but that could be an interesting, um... someone's asking if it's okay to share the channel or the video that they saw the mosaic purse. Ab absolutely. If you want to drop a link in the, in the chat so that other people can find it, that's perfectly fine with me. Um, we try and link to other things. If people have interesting things going on. Um, Oh, um, Okay, my husband's saying that it might get, the link might get blocked automatically by YouTube. Um, but if you get the name of the channel, we can, you can certainly throw that in there. Um, all right, so moving on from Bloom, we've spent a long time talking about these squares. If you have additional suggestions on stitches you'd like to see, um, particularly the Bloom stitch worked up, I've got another... Um, handful of squares that I'm going to work up. My intent is to work up 12 total, but if there's a bunch that people want to see, I think I can get seven to eight squares per ball. So I've got these six worked up, and from that ball, I still have this much left, um, which, I don't know, is it's probably enough for at least two more. So that means I can get eight, I've got two balls on hand with the bloom yarn um, of both the peony and the gray. So that really leaves me enough to do 16. 
Um, I probably won't do... I probably won't do 16 because that's going to give me a weird number, but I could do 15, which gives me a 3x5 blanket. Um, if I do 4x4, four four, that gets me to a square blanket. And I don't usually love square blankets. So 15 gets me 3x5, so 15 might be what I go with, um, depending on what suggestions you guys have. Otherwise, I might stop with 3x4 and go with 12 squares, which was my original intent. That makes a pretty small blanket. But once you... Once you work up, well, once you stitch them all together and then um, you stitch them all together and then add a border around the outside. And that'll allow me to do a, another border tutorial. Um, and the, the border around the outside, I'm thinking about just going with a solid like white or a solid green, depending on what I feel like, um, just to sort of break up the crazy patterning. Um, all right, so I'm going to clear bloom off and what else did I have? Okay. Another yarn that I showed off recently was this yarn B must be Merino. This is a yarn that I recently came across from, uh, from Hobby Lobby. <laughs> I can't do mirrors, even if I'm being directed. Yeah. <laughs> uh drives my husband a little bit crazy that I can't uh seem to get the the mirroring down but anyway uh this is yarn b must be merino I'm gonna go through the stats real quick for those of you who didn't see me unbox this on live stream uh, must be merino is let's see 50% merino wool 25% acrylic 25% nylon it is a number three DK weight yarn. Uh, they are suggesting a four millimeter G hook or a four and a half millimeter US seven hook or uh, needle for knitting. So I have the colors silver gray and bright blue. And I think I mentioned when I unboxed this, or maybe this was a recent decision on my part, um, but I have a close friend who has kids who are really getting into Harry Potter. And one of them is into Ravenclaw House, for those of you who are into Harry Potter. Um, and so what I've been working on for her is a scarf. Um, and I will say that I do know that there's some uh, back and forth with Ravenclaw, because in the book it's supposed to be blue and bronze and... In the movie, it's blue and silver, and uh, be that uh, as it is, the bigger issue is that Yarn B does not cut, or this Yarn B Must Mer Merino doesn't come in anything close to bronze. So I went blue and silver. Um, so this I worked up in the Marguerite stitch. Uh, the Marguerite stitch for me worked up with just a crazy amount of skew. And by that, I mean, you can see as I work that this is sort of running at an angle and this is running at an angle. And I, I don't really know why that is, but when I, what's really obvious is when I fold it in half, you can see that these stripes are really moving at an angle. Um, it's not just that it's tipped. So if I make it straight... It doesn't really show up on stream very well. I can see it. Um, but these are all running. Um, it's more obvious if I go like this. You can see that they're they're running at pretty severe angle. Um, it works out perfect for a scarf. Because when you put this on, then it ends up laying really nice. Um, because these are like laying. It's kind of hard to show here. But it's laying... <clears throat> It's laying like at an angle. And so that lays and like hangs really nice on on you. So I actually really, even though it worked up with this crazy skew, I ended up really liking how it turned out. Um, this was a really simple pattern. Um, it's just eight rows of blue, a row of silver, a row of blue, a row of silver, and then eight rows of blue. And I went ahead and just broke the yarn um, at every color change, there are ways to carry yarn up and I didn't feel like bothering with those. I just went ahead and sewed my ends in. I had a lot of ends to sew in 
but it is what it is. Um, I'll do a full review on this yarn, but I ended up really liking it. It feels like high quality. Um, I love merino wool, and any time that you can get good merino in a big box brand is really nice. So I really liked it. Um, like I said, this this is 50% merino, and then the rest is synthetic. It's 25% uh, acrylic, 25% nylon. Gives it a really nice amount of stretch. I think it'll hold up really well. Um, there's basically no real halo to talk about, so the stitches were really like clean and crisp. It's got beautiful stitch definition. You can see um, sort of the swirl to the marguerite stitch. Um, the Margaret stitch is pretty easy to work up. It's just a half double crochet, uh, five together, and you work it over some stitches. It's If you can make a half double crochet, you can do this stitch with just a little bit of practice. Um, and so this will certainly get added to my list of things that I need to make tutorials for. Um, unfortunately, tutorials take up a lot more time and more editing, usually because I have to do them in stages as I work a project up. But um, which is why we tend to get live streams out super regularly, um, and things like reviews out much quicker than tutorials show up. But, um, if you are a subscriber to the channel, you should get notifications anytime that we, uh, publish a video or are live. Um, if you don't seem to be getting notifications... Um, it might be because you're not subscribed, even though you join us a lot. So you can hit like and subscribe on this video. Um, if you are subscribed and you're not getting notifications, you can see that there's a bell. <laughs> um, and if you click that bell, uh, there's a little drop down that will tell you, um, t that you might be on preferred or personalized. personalized notifications, you need to switch that to all so that you get all the notifications. Um, so anytime we publish a video on a review or a tutorial, you can get those and uh, not miss any of our videos. So one of the quick things that I think I'd like to try and do here is get a video just on how I did this fringe. Um, it's a pretty simple concept, um, just adding fringe, but... Uh, So um, I, I'd like to just do a quick video and it should be relatively easy. I did this side. Um, I'll do a quick video showing this side on how I added this fringe here. And then um, I've seen a lot of videos that show trimming this up with scissors and that looks like a giant mess. Um, I have an idea of a way to trim this up without, uh, without having to try and cut moving items. So um, stay tuned for that, and we'll see how that turns out, uh, my alternate way of cutting these up. So, yeah. So uh, my husband's asking if it's using a rotary cutter, and the answer is yes. Um, my thought was that it has to be easier to trim this with rotary cutter. So we'll see how it goes. Um Yeah, so kind of th going back through the chat, um, Kitty Mom shared the location to get the mosaic squares. Um, let's see. I'm having a hard time reading the oh, names. She sent, it to, she sent it to Michelle and Randy. Oh, okay, they're, I see. They're, they're chatting. Okay, I see. I'm trying to catch up on the chat. Uh, the Because uh, it's great that you guys are chatting amongst each other, but it's hard to uh, read the larger paragraphs um, and keep up. So I'm hoping that my husband's reading them and will tell me if I miss something important. Um, Runaway Needle Red said that she sent pics via Instagram. I will check those after the live stream, or my husband might be checking those now. I think she's um, to Michelle oh, okay. Never mind. Um, and then Michelle's saying that a lot of people have been complaining that they're not getting YouTube notifications and that YouTube might be having problems. Uh, YouTube seems to always be having problems. I think that they just, um, that's a constant truth about YouTube. 
Um, but the best I can suggest is that you do the subscribe to all and hopefully YouTube will get their act together and start actually sending out notifications when you ask for them. Um, I know that there's also, if you keep YouTube on your phone, you get slightly different, at least I do, I get slightly different notifications pushed to my phone than I do to my email. Um, so if you have the YouTube app and it has notifications, I, I tend to get slightly different things popping up on there. Um, and yeah, so that's this here. That's sort of, this is mostly just sort of a stay tuned. Um, these videos should come out rather quickly because this is a scarf that I'm going to be giving away, uh, for part of a Halloween costume. So I've only got a short amount of time before it needs to go. I guess it's two months still, but, um, for me, that's a short amount of time for getting videos together. Um, but it's, she's going to go as, uh, Luna. And so this is her Ravenclaw scarf to go with that. Um, and I actually have an emblem on order from Etsy to add on to here. Um, it's an iron on or sew on because this is 50% Merino. I might be able to iron it on, but I probably am just going to sew it on. So clear this out of the way. And then... Um, I mentioned that I was sick and that I didn't have much time to shop, but that didn't mean I had no time to shop. Um, what I've got here to show off is not exactly crochet related, but, um, is because we've talk been talking about beading. I came across this in, there's a weird section in my Joanne fabric. Um, it's all the way at the back of the store by like the classroom and it's like a shelf of stuff that they don't actually sell, but like had returned or got like a special internet order. Um, it's like one section of stuff that they don't know where to put. And there were two of these on the shelf. This is the Dare Ice or Daris bead spinner. And what this is, is an automatic bead threading or like bead, um, like a beading tool. So, um... Anyway, I'm going to open this up. I have not opened it up. I haven't put batteries in. They're sitting next to me and just see if this is able to bead. My thought was that if this actually works, um, any of you out there who might have limited mobility in your hands, so like arthritis uh, or something where you don't have perfect fine motor control, it might be really difficult to string beads. But once they're on something like a beetle needle, then... It, it, it might be a lot easier to just slide them up once they're strung, but if you have to try and put each one on, that's that's actually a lot of work to, like, keep your fingers pinched and, and thread it on. So um, my thought was if this works, it might be a great tool for... <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. Um, my thought was that this might work to help those of you out um, that have those issues, or it might just be faster than threading by hand, um, which does take quite a bit of effort. So, um, I have not opened this. We're just gonna unbox this and see what happens. So the back tells me that I get a spinner. Um, sorry for all the crinkling on audio here. Um, I get a spinner. And three bowls for beads, um, which is kind of nice because then if you're working with different beads for a project, I think their intent here is for those who make jewelry to be able to bead easily. Um, probably can't see that because of the lighting, but there's like, there's different like little jewelry things that are made of beads on the end. So I think that's their target market. Um, so you get the automatic bead uh, spinner. Um, three bowls. One is already mounted in the spinner. Uh, two threading needles. And the lids on the bowls and some thread. Um, and an instruction manual. That says that it is easy to follow. Um... So, yeah, uh, Stephanie's mentioning that would be a cool, this, if it works. So we're going to find out if it works. This is instructions for making three different necklaces that they came with. They're in Spanish, though, so that's not super helpful uh, to me. 
Michelle also asked if there was a hat. Oh, Michelle asked if there was a hat to go with the scarf. Um, I did not make a hat. I suspect that working the marguerite stitch in the round would be rather difficult because of the way it's worked. Um, I might be able to do it if I don't work it in the round and instead work it in where you join the rounds. Um, so I guess instead of working it in a continuous spiral, um, if you work it with joined rounds, I might be able to. But with the amount of skew that it has, it might make for a really, like, swirly hat. Um, I'm not sure. I, I'll think about it. Um, I haven't done much hat designing, but I have done um, a little bit of... Uh, well, I've done quite a bit of hat making, so I might be able to figure out how to turn the marguerite stitch into a hat. If I do, um, then I definitely will turn that into a video. Um, those are in French, same instructions. These ones are in English, so it looks like it's three different languages available. Um, just tells you how much seed bead. I, what I'm looking for are the English instructions to running the beater. So it looks like you put the curved part of the needle that they provided in, um, and you just put the, the thread right on which does look like an option. What I'm hoping is that the curved part of my beetle needle will be sufficient, but it does look like it's maybe a little straighter. Uh, this curve though on the, uh, so the beetle needle has a curved end right here. And I'm hoping that that is curved enough that it will automatically thread. But we are going to find out together. Um, Otherwise, I'll try one of their needles and see if there's an easy way to transfer from one to the other. Um, somebody suggesting to make a rectangle and then sew the ends into a tube for a hat. And then I guess you'd gather the top. Yeah, that would make a slouchy hat. Um, that might work. Um, I haven't made a hat... Uh, haven't made a hat that way, but I'd be willing to give it a try. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to put batteries in this. I've got the batteries ready sitting next to me. Hopefully I grabbed the right kind of batteries. I did. Um, okay. Okay. So it would be double layer hat, super thick and warm. Yeah, I can see that working. Um, that'd be interesting. I could give that a try. I've never made a hat like that. Um, all right. So I've got my beading bowl here. It looks like it's pretty straightforward. It's just going to spin around. Um, it can spin left or right. It's pretty loud. We might have to turn the audio down. Sorry for those of you watching with headphones. Um, this is not going to be any quieter when I pour the beads in here. Um, I'm having a hard time getting... I've got the tube so packed in here that they don't want to come out. All right, so I've got a tube here. Um, whoa. Explode and throw some beads around. It's going to be a party. All right, so they're all in there. Um, hopefully you can see that. Um, so the beads are just in there. I'm going to try turning it on, and hopefully they don't spill all out. All right, so much louder than I expected. So I'm hoping we're going to adjust the audio and hopefully not deafen you all. It's, it's not too loud. Um, but I'm going to turn this on and stick this. Ah. So I'm just sticking so the curve is going against the beads. Um, I managed to get one bead on. Okay, so we're going to try and get a better view on this by adjusting one of the cameras. Um, so it immediately got one bead and then I got zero more. Um, I'm looking, I'm just going to glance at the directions real quick while we're adjusting that. So put the hook the opposite way. That's basically what I did. Um, yeah, so there we go. Bead spinner. Okay. 
Um, so I might not have enough of an angle on here. So I'm going to turn this again, and I'm going to turn this guy on. And I'm just trying to catch beads here. But, all right, so that doesn't really work great. Uh, I'm going to try with their needle and see if it's just the uh, angle of the hook. This needle feels a lot more flexible. Um, it's real bendy. Okay. So I'm going to turn this on. Um, let's see how they've got that. Okay, so they actually have it going with the direction of spin. All right, we'll try it. I got it on that side. I don't think that's ever going to get anything. All right, well, I clearly don't know what I'm doing with this. Um... But the beauty of YouTube is that I'm positive that somebody will know what to do. And there's probably a video. Oh, it looks like I've got multiple needles here or something. Oh, no, this whole thing is a giant. That's actually pretty cool. This whole thing is a double wire just folded into a bendy thing. Um, I don't know if you can see this real well. Um, let me turn the bead spinner there so there's a backdrop. So this is, this is the beading wire, um, but it's basically just doubled over wire held next to each other. So there's two of those in here. Um, and yeah, so based on the instructions, I don't exactly know how they get on there. Um, but... I, like I said, I'm willing to give it a shot. I think if you do this, I'm trying to decide if there's a way to transfer them if you got it onto their needle, and I don't think there is, but there is probably a way to bend this into the right angle. Um, so if you match this curve with the wire, you might be able to hook them the right direction. So I might try before the next video or before I do a video on this in more in depth, um, I might try bending this around something and curving it to the exact same angle here. Um, I might also just watch somebody else's YouTube video and find out how they use it because maybe I just don't know what I'm doing. Um, the instructions are pretty limited, even though I haven't read them in full. Um, they... Uh, they're, they're just a single page here of instructions with a couple of pictures. Um, so yeah. Anyway, uh, this is cool in theory. If it works, that would be awesome. I think it would be a really, uh, like I said, a beneficial thing to somebody who has a, who struggles to bead or, uh, thread their beads onto either the beetle needle or onto their yarn. Um, if you were going to pre-string, which I hate, but if you were going to pre-string, you could use their needle and then just stick your yarn through and just keep throwing them down your yarn. Um, pre-stringing beads is a way that a lot of people bead. Um, and so that would be, if you have to pre-string, that would be really easy. Done this way. Done this way. Sorry, I have the hiccups. Um, but if you're not going to pre-string then you need to use something like a beetle needle or a uh, small crochet hook. And in that case, if I can get this to bend into the right shape and thread, that would be awesome. If not, I guess you'll have to stick to just hand stringing the beetle needle. Um, I do know that we've talked repeatedly about getting a beading video. It is at the top of our list, and I know a lot of you have been uh, interested in seeing some beading videos and how I bead. Um, so again, that's top priority right now, and we'll be getting that video out really shortly. 
Um, that's more or less all I've got to show you tonight. If you guys have questions about anything you've seen, you have more questions um, about anything crochet or yarn related, um, then uh, go ahead and throw those in the comment section. Uh, or not the comment section, but the live chat, and we can talk about those right now. Um, somebody's asking where to get the beetle needle. Um, I bought mine from Amazon. One millimeter um, you need a one millimeter if you're going to do, uh, six aught beads, which is what I have, um, and fingering weight yarn. You need the 0.8 if you're going to do eight aught beads and, uh, uh, lace weight yarn. Um, and you can can't you probably could get away with the one millimeter for both lace and fingering weight but you can't use the 0.8 for fingering weight it splits the yarn too badly so on the end of this there's a teeny tiny little hook um that allows you to hold on to your yarn while you slide the bead down um that's really the only thing that makes this just not a wire and if you use the 0.8 with um, fingering weight yarn, you tend to just split your yarn all over the place. Um, okay. Zena says, face the hook toward the outer wall. Did you try that? Uh, says, face the hook toward the outer wall. All right, we'll give that a shot. All right. So face... So we're going to face the hook towards the outer wall. So go this way, maybe. And spin it that way. It's actually just really hard to hold on to. Like, it just twists really badly. Oh, I got a couple. And I immediately lost them. <laughs> I got one. Oh, that's getting a few. All right, so that does work, but I almost immediately lose them. So it's almost like if you get one on there, you've got to throw it down your yarn. Um, it might also not be full enough. Um, so the other thing that I did just see is that it should be a third to half full, and I would say that's probably not at all where I'm at fullness wise. Um, I don't know. I don't know what you're supposed to do if you only have this much that you want to make a necklace out of. I guess you just have to hand string those. Um, but it, it doesn't seem useful to have a tool that doesn't work until it's empty. Um, if I put seven beads in there, then I should be able to string those seven because otherwise what am I supposed to do? This, these are just garbage. Um, so I'm not sure what their intent there is. Um, somebody was saying that they wanted to order the beetle needle, but the, we've got the hurricane in, coming. So, um, along with everyone in the chat, yeah, stay safe. And, uh, hopefully that is, uh, ends up being a lot less intense than what I've been hearing on the reports. Um, Runaway Red's asking if we reviewed uh zz twist and i believe we did um so if you check the channel or my husband can probably grab you a link real quick um but uh yes we did review zz twist i loved it um it's a little bit weird to work with because i think as crocheters we've learned to compensate for having s twist yarn um and and that's, so when you have a yarn that works with you, you almost fight it a little bit. Um, but other than that, it came out. I have a pair of fingerless gloves. I don't have them handy. I'm, well, actually, they're probably in this bin, um, but I could go fishing for them. But they turned out absolutely stunning with beautiful stitch definition. If you want a similar yarn, but you still want it to be S-twist, the... 
What was the name of that yarn? Uh, Beautiful You. Lion Brand just released a yarn called Beautiful You. It's a little bit finer, but it has a really, really similar hand to it. Um, so ZZ Twist is really pretty. I actually just bought a few more colors. Um, my friend's kids wanted to learn to crochet. So I just picked up a couple more colors. We were going to make some fingerless gloves and, uh, work those up. So, um, yeah, I strongly recommend it. It's probably not going to be a yarn that, uh, Lion Brand holds on to. Um, if that was my guess, because it's such a weird thing and targeted at crocheters and, um, it's my guess that they probably just will let that line die, especially if you guys are all seeing it on clearance, but, um, it's pretty unfortunate because it was an awesome yarn. Um, but yeah, if you can get it on clearance, then, uh, go for it and, uh, definitely stock up on that because I think it's a really nice yarn. It is not a warm or fluffy yarn. Um, and by that, I mean, it's not, it, it has almost no halo. It's, it's really sort of a hard looking yarn, if that makes sense. Um, it's really, really tightly twisted and shows off stitches beautiful, but it does not, it's not like soft and cuddly. It's really good for accessories though. Um, though I might not want like a, like warm, cozy cowl out of it. If, if I wanted like a shawl that really had beautiful stitches, um, or in the case of fingerless gloves, it was perfect. Uh, Runaway Needle Reds asking what pattern I used for fingerless gloves. My absolute favorite go-to pattern is Heart of a Rockstar by Rachie Newen Designs. There's, it's a set of three patterns, um, a cowl, a fing fingerless glove pattern, and a... Uh, hat. And I've made, I don't know, a dozen or so of the fingerless gloves and they always turn out perfect. And I really love the way they work up, um, really simple stitches and really well written pattern. So strongly recommend it. It's worth the price of the paid pattern, uh, to pick that up. But, but yeah, really turned out well. I, I'll see real quick if I've got it. Um, Dump this out. Mm. Yes. I've got one. I don't know where the other one is, but I've got one. So this is after a year or a season, I guess I should say, of wearing. But you can see here, um, it's getting a little bit ragged after wear, but I, I wore these like all day, every day. Um, I really like having, um, fingerless gloves, keep your hands warmer than you'd think. Um, I have a tendency for my fingertips to get super, super cold and you wouldn't think fingerless gloves would help at all with that, but just the ability to like curl your hand up against something that's warm from your body makes a huge difference. Um, and unfortunately my nail polish is messed up. I don't know if you can see that, but it doesn't look great. But, um, I accidentally hit it with a little acetone taking, uh, nail polish off my toes. But anyway, so this is the ZZ Twist after a year. The stitches look just stunning. Let me move some of the excess off screen here. Um, but yeah, you can see just like every single stitch just shows up beautifully in this pattern. So turn it. Yeah. The yarn just looks really nice. Um... And like I said, I wore them a ton. There's little fuzzes from everything else. The other thing that I do a lot of times with fingerless gloves is I put on a pair of magic stretch gloves, which are just like the super cheap gloves that you can buy pretty much everywhere for like 99 cents a pair. Um, and then uh, I put those on underneath and then put a second layer over and you sort of get a double warmth instead of um, having like to double glove and lose all your dexterity. So I'm really excited. I ordered a pair of photography gloves from, I think Adorama. Oh no, they're from B&H. We got them on a deal. They had a huge deal zone and they're knit gloves, but the fingers on the index and thumb on both hands flip back so that you, ha you have access to your fingertips on just these fingers here. 
Um, so the idea there is for photography that you can um, have these fingers free for operating your camera. But what it ends up being is really good for, like, texting. It drives me crazy. I have uh, thumbprint unlock on my phone, and I'll do all of the, like, I'll have touch-sensitive gloves, but then I still have to type my password, and I can't use them. And I try, like, four times to unlock it, and I'm like, oh, yeah, gloves. So uh, having the fingertips available on just my index and thumbs will be really nice, um, keeping everything else warm. Uh, we go out and shoot just video a lot of times. And in the winter, it's really easy to go out on the river and just take pictures of birds and basically icebergs. Um, that we get a lot of ice flow down the Illinois river. And so, um, the downside to that is it's absolutely freezing out and my fingertips freeze. So I'm looking forward to having them all covered. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, it came from the Heart of a Rock Star patterns. The link is up just a few comments above um, that should get you there. Um, on, again, I've, I've mentioned Rachie Newen Designs a whole lot. Um, and she's one of my favorite pattern designers. I used to do some testing for her. Um, I haven't done any testing for her in a long time, but her patterns are really well written and worth the price. Um so I strongly recommend pretty much anything she makes. So she's got a couple of free patterns from when she started out, but uh, all of her new stuff is just really um, gorgeous stitch designs and pretty much anything I show off tends to come from her. So um, with that being said, I see a couple people bowing out for the night. Um, but yeah, if there's additional comments or questions... Um, just leave those in the chat right now and, uh, we'll try and get through if you've got any crochet or yarn related questions. Um, I'd be happy to help you out with those. If you have questions about things that, uh, we talked about in the live stream, I'd be happy to pull those back out. Um, you can see the Facebook and Instagram, uh, information, my, uh, Username is at experiments and crafting. So you can find me there. Um, feel free at any time that we're not streaming. If you have questions about crochet or yarn or you want to show me projects, I really love seeing projects, um, especially of anything that I've mentioned on stream or that are part of my videos. So if you work up a corner to corner blanket using one of my videos, um, or the, uh, interlocking shell stitch. Um, please share those with me on Instagram. You can tag me or send me direct messages. Most people have been sending direct messages, but feel free to post it yourself, um, and just tag me in it. And I, I'll check those out. Um, I really love seeing projects. Uh, it sort of makes it worth doing the channel. Um, like, we, we put a lot of effort in and it's really fun to like interact with you guys in the chat. But when people start sending me stuff, I really know that they're um, enjoying the patterns and, and are able to follow them. Um, I hate to make tutorial videos that aren't getting followed because people don't understand what I'm saying. So when I see finished projects, it lets me know that at least it made sense to one person. So, um... But yeah, so yeah, so Stephanie Ann said that she likes Rachie's design. She's working on the rainy days shawl. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly what that one looks like, but she's released so many recently that um, there's one right now. I think it's called Raindrops on Roses. That's the one that's in my uh, that's in my top of the list of her stuff to do. Oh, did I? Yeah. If you say so. Your picture is, you're on the page for Rainy Day Shawl. Oh, apparently I'm on the page for Rainy Day Shawl and I made that one. I don't remember. Um, like I said, I've, so there's two problems. Um, one, I make a lot of stuff for Rachie Newen Designs, or at least I used to. Um, and the other problem is that uh, a lot of times, oh, so apparently there's the shawl that I made. That's out of Mandala. 
uh, probably Mandala Baby with those colors. Um, so there's two issues there. One is that uh, I don't remember anything ever. I have a terrible memory. You can ask my husband. It's like a sieve. Um, Two is that a lot of times when Rachie is testing, she uses a, like, placeholder name. Um, so it might be, like, the name of the yarn she's using. And then when she releases the pattern, she changes the name. And so I might know it as one thing, and it's changed since then. Um, and so that's happened on a number of shawls where I'll know it by its testing name, but not by its... Uh, final published name so um but yeah uh if i remember correctly that one worked up really really well um i think there's also a blocking tutorial on that video i think i spray blocked that so i think that's my spray blocking video um but yeah so i guess i guess i've reviewed it and uh worked out great but uh yeah i I mean, you saw me dump out my pile of shawls. I, like I said, I have a memory like a sieve, and when it comes to names of patterns, uh, they don't they don't stay in there very well. Um, one of the other things that I was going to mention, so we've tried this a couple of times, where I tried a live stream, um, twice I think we tried to live stream where I made a crochet edge blanket video, and I've shown some of them on stream before and. Both times we tried to live stream it, the videos we had to take down because uh, YouTube just kept booting us out. And for the most part, the live streams have been continuous, though I think the last time we streamed, YouTube kicked us out like two or three times. But um, my intent here, again, sorry to uh, inundate you guys with Harry Potter stuff, but I've got a couple of... Uh, pieces of fleece that I'm going to be doing a crochet edge on. Um, and I will turn that into a video as well. Um, crochet edge blankets are really, really good present for kids. Um, kids' interests change so rapidly. So right now they're really into Harry Potter. Um, for years it was My Little Pony. Um, and it changes by like the week on what... Uh, these kids are into and so it's really low effort to put an edge on a fleece print where it would be extremely high effort to make a ravenclaw blanket out of a corner to corner pattern using a grid and if i was making it for an adult who i know was super into harry potter and was always going to be into harry potter um that would be one thing but for a kid who is just first experiencing it and is sort of into it right now, but might change their interests. Um, hopefully not, but might change their interests. Um, picking a patterned fleece from Joanne Fabric that you can get for 10-ish dollars and putting a border on the edge makes it homemade, but is super easy. And so I can show you guys all how to do this. Uh, like I said, the, the live stream that we tried to do this on uh, ended up being a disaster and it was before we were doing multi-cam and really had things figured out. So, um, I'm hoping that, uh, that we'll get this, um, out pretty soon. Um, yeah. Okay, so Stephanie Ann mentioned that she likes the videos and that they're very clear and she's learned a lot of te techniques. Thank you for that feedback. That really helps me. Um, it's it's good for me to know that they make sense to people. So And that uh, it's encouragement to keep on uh, making more videos. Um, so thank you for that. Um, scrolling down... Uh, Somebody made an entire bedspread from a granny spike stitch. That's great to hear. I'd love to see pictures of that. Um, again, if you post that to Facebook or Instagram and tag me at Experiments and Crafting, I would love to see that. Um, you are miles ahead of me on that. I, I made that tutorial, but I actually haven't finished the blanket that I, I showed in that tutorial. So, um, what? I thought it was done. You did the crab, you did the crab border, didn't you? No, not on that one. 
That's the granny spike. The crab tutorial is on the corner to corner. The granny spike is the really uh, dense stitch. Um, I really have been enjoying uh, solid stitches. And so that's why the, um, the interlocking shell stitch blanket keeps coming up. And then that granny spike is just sitting waiting for me to finish. Um, I probably should have worked on that while I was sick instead of working on these random bloom squares. But that's what I wanted to work on. Um, and then let's see, where are we at here? Um, what yardage do I use for the blankets? So, um, they're pretty little kids. They're actually really tall kids, but they're only eight. So even really tall for eight is still only like four feet tall. Um, so I probably could have gotten away with a yard and a half, but when they cut, one of these pieces, there was a piece wrapped around the outside and I think it was like a yard and seven eighths or something. So I just, they gave me the yard for a price and then the rest was at remnant price. Um, and then the other one I had cut at two yards just so it was close. So, um, the end result of that is it depends on the height of the person that you want to make it for. If you're making it for a bedspread, there's sort of standard lengths, um, that you can look up. If you're just making it for like a throw for a couch, there are again standard lengths, but um, generally I grab two yards of any fabric I buy. Um, if you're making a baby blanket, you can get away with remnant lengths if you get sort of a long remnant, um, but you have to be really careful of pattern direction. Um, and I'll explain this better in the full video, but if you get a pattern that goes only one direction, so you can see, um, this Ravenclaw blanket is a really good example. Um, so all the ravens are facing the same direction. And so this blanket has to be longer than it is wide, or you're going to have a sideways blanket. Um, if you only got a yard of this, you couldn't, so this is folded in half right now. Um, so a yard of this is what I've got right here. Um, well, yeah, I've got two yards. So let's say this was three quarters of a yard. So that's roughly a quarter gone. I could make a little blanket for like a car seat blanket. Um, I always liked having very small blankets to throw over kids when, uh, when they were in the car seat or in like a umbrella stroller that didn't drag on the ground. The problem is that if you only have three quarters of a yard, this is big enough to cover a little kid, but you have to turn it this way for it to be longer than it is wide. Um, especially since, the, like I said, this is folded in half, so it would be much, much wider than it was long. That works out fine if you have a print that goes all different directions, but if it's direct, like if it's directional like this pattern, then it doesn't work. So if you get remnant lengths, you have to pay attention to what direction the, the fleece goes. This would not work for remnant length, like a three quarter of a yard. Um, this blanket on the other hand though, uh, the, the crests on here are all going different directions. So this one's upright, but this one's upside down. Um, this one's sideways. This one's completely the opposite direction of this one. And because these are all different directions, you can use a smaller piece and turn it lengthwise. So if you open this up to full width and it's only a little long, you can still make a decent sized blanket um, for a, a toddler or a uh, small kid for just covering them in a car seat or in like an umbrella stroller. And so I guess my point is that uh, the licensed fleece costs a little bit more. It's usually like $14.99 a yard. Um, unfortunately, it always seems to be on sale for like 20 to 25% off, which means that you can't use like a 40 or 50 or 60% off coupon. Um, so a lot of times you'll go in and it'll already be on sale. So you can't use the, the higher percentage coupon. Um, but if you get it as a remnant, you get 25% off and then an additional 50. And that really brings down the price and you can make lots of really cheap blankets. Um, 
the non-licensed fleece, so if you just have a kid who changes what their favorite animal is, you can just grab, you know, dolphins or narwhals or penguins. Actually, you can't grab penguins. We looked all over the store. I could not find penguin fleece. Um, But whatever animal or generic pattern that they're into, then you can get those cheap all the time. Um, I think Blizzard fleece was $3.99 a yard the other day. So you're looking at $8 for two yards and then one ball of yarn on top of it. And that's it for investment and price. You could probably be out the door for inside of $12. So... Um, so my husband's asking if you can do a double layer blanket. Um, and so what you're, what you'd be looking at is you have to cut the holes at the same time. Um, so you, when you, when you make a crochet edge blanket, use a rotary cutter that looks like a, uh, sort of like a saw blade where it's got, uh, or like a gear. And so it cuts and then it skips a section, cuts and skips a section. And so you have to push really hard to get it through two layers of fleece. If you don't cut them at the same time, you'll never get your holes to line up. So I have done double layer blankets. All you have to do is cut through two layers. And then um, before you move anything, you put a whole bunch of safety pins linking the the holes up so that they can't shift. Um, And so you can do double layer. I think a crochet edge blanket looks so much fancier than a tie blanket. Like, just a million times fancier. Um, I Let me grab one out of the basket. I'm going to walk away for just one second. You might be able to still hear me, but we are not on the lab. We're on the, the audio on the top. So uh, you might not be able to hear me. Let me see if I've got... Here's one really nice example. So. All right. So what I've got here is a crochet edge blanket. Let me clear some of this off. So I can unfold this without catching. The beetle needle is really nice, but it catches on just literally everything. Um, Now it fell on the floor, which means it's probably going to be stuck in the carpet. Uh, it gets really, really caught. We've got like indoor outdoor carpet with really short, uh, pile on it and it gets caught terrible in that carpet. Um, all right. So this was just a small piece of fleece. This is where I was talking about getting remnant size. So this is my table's 36 inches. This is probably just a yard. So I bought this as a remnant which means if fleece was on sale that day for $3.99 a yard, um, you would get it for sale price plus remnant price on top of it, which means that it would have been $3.99 and then half price, so 2 bucks a yard. I would have paid $2 for this entire piece because you get sale price um, and then 50%, so whatever that day's selling price and 50%. And then sometimes remnants are more off, like an additional 25% off remnants. Doesn't happen super often. But if I back this up and we go to zoomed in on this, what you can see is um, each place here is where I put a single crochet into a hole in the fleece. And again, I used a skip cutter to put these in. Um, I didn't have to like snip or cut each one. You just take a rotary cutter with this blade on and cut all the holes at one shot. I single crocheted all the way around and then it looks like I double crocheted three in one stitch, double crocheted one in the next stitch, three in one, then no skips. And that gave just a very slight wave because I put slightly too many. I'm going to fold it up so you can see the edge a little bit better here. Um, but because I put slightly too many stitches in, um, basically two stitches per, it, it, it works out to be two stitches per single crochet, but instead I did three, one, three, one, three, one. And so it gives it just this nice little wiggle to the outside. Um, but that's it. It was two rounds and a round of single crochet, a round of 
double crochet and that was it all the way around the blanket and it just looks so much cleaner and nicer than a tied blanket uh, my mom has made blankets before and she's got a different way of tying blankets and those are nicer than just knots um, she makes a slit and then loops the the uh, yarn back or the fleece back through itself and again those look nice but um but yeah I think the crocheted edge just looks so nice by comparison. Uh, I've made a bunch of baby gifts before where it's nothing but a fleece blanket with a crocheted edge and then just a little matching headband. Um, and that's a whole set. It's maybe three hours worth of work. And it looks like a really fancy gift. So, excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry. Um, yeah, really fancy gift. Uh, Stephanie's mentioning that they use uh, Blizzard Fleece for guinea pig liners. Um, yeah, so my mom has guinea pigs and does the same thing. Um, just lines their cages with uh, fleece and then it's super easy to wash and you don't have to buy bedding and have that. Uh, uh, um, yeah, <laughs> so she probably is watching she usually does so she might weigh in on the guinea pig debate here or the guinea pig comfort uh conversation um on a side note pertaining to guinea pigs but not pertaining at all to this channel uh PetSmart has guinea pig halloween costumes and they are hilarious to go look at so um for anybody who's in um, anybody who's into guinea pigs and might be interested in seeing some ridiculous costumes, uh, you should check out PetSmart's website and get, I think they're $5.99. They were stupid cheap. Um, but I don't have a guinea pig, but I kind of want a guinea pig bumblebee costume. They're kind of hilarious. So, um, yeah. So anyway, uh... That's really all I have tonight. I really want to get this. Uh, I have a thousand videos that I want to get out to you guys. And if you tell me what you are most interested in seeing, I know beading is at the top of a lot of people's list. Um, that helps me prioritize. Um, I know most of you know this, but I work still a 40 hour week. So does my husband. Um, so this is a hobby for us, not a full time, like steady income stream, though I'd love it to be. Um, but I probably spend money too fast for this to make any money. But anyway, um, because of that and because of family obligations and stuff, it is slower to get videos out. Um, but if you tell me what you want to see, I can try and prioritize those higher so that, uh, we get the videos that you guys want to see. Um, and you keep coming back and seeing the, the channel. So, um, I'm kind of scrolling through. We're talking about guinea pigs costume and uh, yeah. So again, that's really all I have tonight. And if you have any further questions after we are not live anymore, you can throw those in the comment section or again, you can find me on Facebook or Instagram at experiments and crafting um, you can tag me in posts or you can direct message me. I'm happy to chat with you and, uh, talk all things yarn and crochet. So if you have any questions about my tutorials or my videos, or you're just stuck on choosing yarn for a project or something like that, go ahead and throw those, uh, my way either in the comment section or in the, uh, on Facebook or Instagram. And other than that, um, I intend to stream again next week on Tuesday. I know we were a little inconsistent during August um, between my birthday and me being sick. So it's kind of been an every other week the last couple weeks. But um, we should get back on a every Tuesday night stream schedule. So we aim to stream on Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. Central. Um, more often than not, that becomes about 8, 15, 8, 20, just while we get set up after work. Um, so yeah, I'd love to have you join us if you are, I mentioned this earlier in the stream, but if you are a subscriber and you don't seem to be getting notifications when we're live, uh, click that bell and there's a little drop down that will tell you, 
um, that you might be on personalized notifications and you should switch that to all. Um, though most people are saying that it's been a sort of known issue on YouTube and that YouTube is just failing to send notifications even when you ask for all. Um, I know my husband doesn't even get notifications to his phone when we go live. Um, I usually get the email to my personal email and that way I sort of know that it went out to everybody, but, um, he's not even getting like the push notifications to his phone. Um, so there's certainly some problems with YouTube. Um, he loves that bell. So, uh, if you are joining us for the first time or you've joined us a couple times, but you haven't subscribed, please hit subscribe. Um, that just helps us, uh, know that we're doing a good job and that people are interested in our videos. And that way you get, uh, to see future videos. If you like the video, hit like, um, and I think that helps with all of our Facebook algorithms and all of that, or I'm sorry, YouTube algorithms and all that. Um, and then other than that, um, have a great week and I hope to see you again next week and, um, have a good night. Thank you for watching.